Welcome to another episode of the Arrive podcast. Uh, today we are going to be discussing uh, the re- rights and responsibilities of a green card holder. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I want to remind everybody out there listening that there are multiple different ways where you can find information on U.S. immigration law, and we provide various different tools for you uh, to assist you in this process if you, if you have questions um, or need assistance. Um, we have a YouTube channel where we pr- produce videos that cover many of the topics that we also discuss here on the podcast. Uh, We also have a weekly resources blog that goes out and there's on average, I'd say three blogs a week that talk about general immigration matters. So if you haven't already been to our website, rjimmigrationlaw.com, go there. There's a lot of good information on there and you can subscribe to our resources blog and get those updates and information about U.S. immigration. Uh, You can also follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. We're in all those mediums. And if you have an immigration matter that you need assistance with, uh, feel free to call us at uh, at the office at 866-697-1832 or 716-970-4007. Or you can also send us an email info at rjimmigrationlaw.com. We handle immigration matters for Canadians on a regular basis. You know, we're not able to help with all matters. um, And we'll let you know if it's something we can assist you with. We'd be glad to do that. Um, If it's not, we can often provide a referral to someone that can, or we'll let you know, uh, you know, if there's anything that can possibly be done in your case. So today we will be discussing what your rights and responsibilities are if you are a U.S. permanent resident or a U.S. green card holder. What's it mean when you have that? What are your obligations? How do you preserve your green card? What can you do that will get you in trouble if you're on a green card? Um, So it's important that when when you obtain that green card that you understand what it means and you do everything you can to preserve it. And if you're if you're not, you need to be aware of the consequences. So I guess the general question is, you know, what, what do you expect? What should you expect as a green card holder? Christine, what are your expectations as a green card holder? I expect to be able to live in the United States and, and hold a job in the United States and work and spend my life in the U.S. with my family or um, otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, so gives you the ability to live and work in the United States. Sure. So I think the best example I have for for that is like a driver's license. This is what a green card gives you, um, is the ability to be in the United States legally and to participate in society, to have a job, to go to school, um, to live, work, and otherwise be a functional member of society. But like a driver's license, it's not permanent. It it is called a permanent resident card, but it can be taken from you. If you violate the terms of a green card, you can lose it. There are consequences for that. And you can all of a sudden find yourself without a green card. It can be taken away from you. You can also give it up if you don't feel like you can follow the the rules and meet the requirements of being a green card holder. So those are some of the expectations, right? You, you, you have this green card. Now it's up to you to make sure you abide by the rules of having a green card, just like a driver's license. You speed, you do anything else. Well, you could get into trouble and possibly lose your ability to drive, or in this case, lose your ability to, to live and work in the United States. So what are your rights as a U.S. permanent resident or a U.S. green card holder? Once you become a U.S. permanent resident, what do you have the right to do? Uh, you have a right to live in the United States. Anywhere, right? Right. You can any, anywhere in the United right. States. It's not a designated location. So if you have a sponsor, maybe a, a financial sponsor or something like that, or a relative that's in the U.S. that sponsored you, you don't have to live where they live, right? If you're a spouse, you should be living in the same place as your spouse, however. Yes. Uh, but if you're sponsored by a parent or a sibling, then you don't have to live in the same location as your sponsor. So you can live anywhere in the mm-hmm. U.S. 
You can work in the United States. And the good thing about a green card is it's blanket work authorization. Unlike a work visa, a work visa limits you to working for a certain employer and you have to work visa for each employer. And, and sometimes it can only be in certain professions. Well, a green card allows you to work for any employer in the U.S. under any profession you choose to work. Or be self-employed and have your own business. Or exactly, be self-employed. Um, you could work at McDonald's if you want. You could work anywhere. There's no limit to that. Like you said, open your own business, form a corporation, whatever it is. It gives you that authorization to do whatever you want as far as employment in the U.S., as long as it's legal. Um, you can own property in the United States. I mean, foreigners can also own property in the United States. You don't need a green card to do that. But it open it makes it easier, right? Well, for if you're financing permit, and things yeah. like that. So there is some issues you can get a social security number along and with insurance it. and things like that. It makes it makes it easier if you have status in the United States to do those things. And going back to employment, there are some jobs in the US you can't get that they won't even look at you for if you don't have US citizenship or aren't a US permanent resident. Um, so along with financing and buying properties and stuff as well. Um, it opens up the, it makes that easier for you to do, like you said, to get financing. Some lenders won't even look at you unless you have a work visa or permanent residence in the U.S. Right. And, the, and you know, the U.S. federal government has some positions that are reserved solely for permanent residents or citizens of the United States. Yep. Um, what about my kids? They can go to school. They can go to public school. So in the United you States. You probably don't want them working or maybe you do. Depending Maybe. on how old they are, but they could work too if they are permanent residents. If they're a permanent resident, they they are authorized to work. They are authorized to go to school as well. Um, in in the United States, there's free public education, so you don't have to pay for that. But if you want to go to private school or university, most of those require you to pay. Um, uh, so you can go to school in the U.S. Um, you can also get a driver's license, like I mentioned earlier. A green card's like a driver's license. It gives you authority yeah. to do some something. Some states, you don't need permanent residence to get a driver's license, but some you do. You need status in the U.S. in order yeah, to get that. Yeah, you need status, typically. Some, you don't. Yeah. New York's one of those, right? <laughs> Even if you're not in the United States legally, you can still get a driver's license. So you can get a driver's license um, with that with that green card. Um if you want to serve in the armed forces in the United States, and we get calls about this once in a while, people saying, hey, I want to serve in the U.S. military. How do I do that? Um, I'm just a student here. Well, you can't. You have to be at least a U.S. permanent resident. So if you want to serve in the military, the, any branch of the armed services here in the United States, then as a green card holder, you can do that. So then the other thing we want to know are what are your responsibilities as a green card holder? Because... Yeah, and we'll get into those responsibilities here in a second. <laughs> what but you wanted to, you wanted some, to add yeah, more there's rights? Still, there's still more rights, right? Oh. Um, one, you can. This this is one that's huge. If you're a permanent resident, people call, and one of the most common questions we get is, "How do I become a U.S. citizen? I want to become a U.S. citizen." Well, unless you're born a U.S. citizen, uh, then there's a path to becoming one. You, you don't automatically come to the U.S. and say, hey, I want to become a citizen. Well, being a green card holder is often one of the first steps in that process of becoming a U.S. citizen. Once you're a permanent resident, it gives you the ability to then, if you meet the requirements, to one day apply for citizenship in the United States. So that's a huge um, right to a green card holder. Um, you can also sponsor. If you're a green card holder, you can request... Uh, a visa for I don't know if I think of naturalization as a right for a green card holder because I think it's just a it's something that's required before you can become a yeah. citizen of the United States. Yeah, and the US government sees it as a right, right? If you vi if you on if you keep if you keep the conditions of a green card, you have the right to apply for citizenship. Otherwise, you can't apply for it. Right, you can't be on a U.S. work visa or right. a visitor and apply sure. for. You don't have the right to apply for citizenship yet. You have to be a green card holder to apply for citizenship. So that's that's why they see it as a right, um, as long as you abide by the conditions of the green card, right, and make yourself eligible to become a U.S. citizen. You can also sponsor your spouse or unmarried children to live in the United States as a green card holder. Um, so it opens up that possibility. 
And um, you can come and go outside of the United States as you need to, as long as you <laughs> don't do do so for too long. And, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, if you're outside of the United States for too long of a period of time, it can be very problematic. So going on to responsibility, what are your responsibilities as a green card holder? Once you become a lawful permanent resident in the United States, once you get that green card, what are some of your responsibilities? To keep your status in the U.S. current. So you've got to renew your green card periodically. And make your U.S. permanent, the U.S. your permanent residence is part of that, right? Very important. Yeah. We run into this a lot. All right, uh, so you're responsible for living in the United States. They get that immigrant visa, they come to the U.S., and they want to know, well, well, how long do I have to live in the U.S.? Well, you shouldn't be asking that question. If you want a green card, you should also want to live here. Well, and it's not so much about wanting to live here. I think, I think people have the mindset that they're permanent residents in a lot of cases, especially with Canadians, because they're, they want to live that cross-border life. Um, that they can come to the United States whenever they want. And they, they think of themselves as living in their home country or in Canada and just coming to the United States and this green card's like a free pass for them to come to the U.S. and, and stay as long as they want. Yeah. But that's not what it is. Once you come in and you immigrate to the United States, because when you make that first entry to the U.S. after receiving it or you're in the U.S. and you get your green card, at that point you're considered to be an immigrant to the United States. And your home country, every time you go there, that's a visit. When you leave the U.S. Correct. So you need to change your mindset. Once you are a green card holder, you're now a resident of the United States and all time spent outside the U.S. You're visiting. You're not living somewhere else. You're visiting. Yes, that's a good way to put it. You're not visiting the U.S. This right. Is, this is your permanent residence. Right. And I have people say, oh, I want to visit the U.S. to claim my green card after a consular interview or things like that. They that's need, a that's, huge red flag. Right. So I always talk to them and say, listen, you need to change how you think about this. Once you have that and you make that entry to the United States, you're, you're a new immigrant to the United States. And now Canada is a place that you visit. Even if all your stuff's there and you own a house there, you're still visiting from the immigration perspective. Yes. Good point. Um, so... Also, you, some of the other responsibilities as a green card holder, uh, you're supposed to obey all the laws, federal and local. You should okay. probably do that when you're not a green card holder, too. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> there good may be more advice. consequences for you immigration-wise if yeah. you don't. You're, you're, and we'll get into that later, but you, you, if you want that citizenship later or even to preserve your green card and you're breaking the law, you're going to put that in jeopardy. Uh, if you're a male between the ages of 18 and 26 in the United States, you're supposed to register with the selected mm, oh, selective right. service of the U S armed forces. Um, and that's in case they do a draft. They haven't had a draft for decades here in the United States, but you're still required to do that. Um, maintain your status. And in part of maintaining your status is making the U S your, your permanent residence. You're supposed to carry your green card with you at all times as well. And that's some people, some people don't understand that you're supposed to have that status on you at all times. Um, it's actually a violation if you don't carry your green card with you. So you should have it at, with you at all times and be able to produce it if, if requested and keep your address up to date with USCIS because at the end of your green card, they're going to give you a notice telling you it's going to expire. Plus if there's any other communications that they need uh, to have with you, they'll notify you through that address. So make sure you uh, keep that current. So, how do you maintain your green card? We talked about that. It's your responsibility to maintain your permanent residence, right? You have to abide by the rules and regulations of your green card to keep it current. So what are some of the things that, that you must do in order to maintain that green card in the United States once you have it? So you got to live here. I think that's the <laughs> biggest one, right? It's the biggest one we see, yeah. Live here. Yeah. And like you said, there's... the. Most of the people that we deal with, especially Canadians, live a cross-border life. And they ha you can still travel, right? You can still go to Canada as much as you want uh, for short visits. It's when those visits start to become long visits and you're spending more time in Canada than you are in the United States. That's when you're getting going to get into trouble. So the rule of thumb there is if, if you plan on taking a trip outside of the United States or going outside of the United States, and it's going to be six months or more, that's when we start to caution you that you you should 
probably think about getting a reentry permit, which gives you permission to stay longer than six months outside of the United States, or really think about where your permanent residence is. Do you really want to be here? Plenty of Canadians that we talk to have this impression that they can go through the consular process and, and get their green card mailed to their U.S. address, come in and do this visit to the United States to claim their green card, and then they, they get it. They go back to Canada, and they think that they have one year then to move to the United States. Well, guess what? The immigration authority in the United States already thinks you're living here. Yep. So that one year. Once you get it, it the, your intention is to live here. Right. So that one year, the clock's already ticking. Yep. That you're spending outside time outside the United States. So every entry you make to the U.S. after that, a border officer, and they may or may not, you know, as Canadians, and you know, sometimes uh, with the green card, they'll just wave you in and they don't question anything. But all you, all it takes is one border officer to look a little more deeply at your travel history and to recognize that you haven't maintained your residence in the U.S. and they'll put you into removal proceedings. Yep, they could they could ask you to defend your uh, stay in the United States or stay outside of the United States and show that you've actually maintained it and haven't abandoned it. Um, and the time frame is actually a year, 12 months. If you spend a consecutive 12 months outside of the United States, you have effectively abandoned your green card status in the United States unless you can prove otherwise. And that's where a reentry permit can come into play. Um, and under the rules, you're not allowed to use your green card upon reentry if you've been gone over a year. Yeah, and let's be clear be that that reentry permit. permit that Jeremy's talking about is something you need to apply for before you leave the United States. Yes. Not once you're already somewhere else. You have to be physically present in the United States when you file for that reentry permit. And you need to do it before you leave. So. Um, you know, it can process while you're gone and someone can send it to you after the fact, but you need to be in the U.S. before you leave to apply for it. So thinking about it six months after you've left the United States and have been living somewhere else is not a good idea. Too late. Yep. So one of the common questions we get along, along this line is, can I live outside the U.S. and visit periodically to maintain my green card in the U.S.? Well, that's a no. I mean, it's a big no. That's a big no. Unless you're going to be visiting for longer than you're living somewhere else. Yeah. And this is when we've discussed this and we hear this a lot. And there's this misconception out there that if you come to the U.S. and you go to Disneyland once a year for a week or two. You can maintain your green card. You're maintaining your green yeah. card. Now, can not, you get away true. with that? You might be able to get away with it. A lot of people will use their other their their citizenship to enter the U.S. and not their green card in those cases. They'll enter on their Canadian passport because mm-hmm. they don't want to yeah. use their green card. Right. Well, there's ways around it. But once you get caught, once they find out, your green card's in jeopardy. If you haven't already abandoned it because you've already spent too much time outside of the United States. Right. And and every time you enter the United States, if you are a permanent resident, you should be showing that permanent resident card to enter the U.S. And again, if if you have plans to be outside the United States, maybe it's for work or school or another legitimate reason for being outside the United States longer than six months, then you should really think about getting a reentry permit to preserve your green card, especially if you have the intention to return. Now, if you're leaving with no intention to return, well, that's another discussion. You should you should actually think about giving up your green card because having a green card is problematic if you're not living here. It's just going to cause you problems. Well, then you are subject to all the responsibilities um, without getting any of the benefits, really, because you're not living in the U.S. Yes. Now, now we run into issues um, Some that if you don't abide by them, you effectively abandon your green card. Or, like you said, the border officer, at their discretion, can put you in proceedings to have that green card taken from you. Um, and they can deny your entry, and you have to appear before an immigration judge to be able to justify to that judge why you have maintained your green card and that you actually still have it. And there's also um, what's called a returning resident permit as well, that if you've been outside the United States over a year, that you can apply for it at consulate or embassy, uh, and you'd have to show to them that you haven't abandoned your permanent residence in the United States and your stay outside of the United States was protracted for, and you have to have specific reasons. You just can't say it needs to be beyond your control. So if it was something that was under your control, like for example, plenty of green card holders left the United States during COVID 
or were out, you know, when COVID started. And they ha- were under this mistaken impression that they couldn't come to the United States or travel because, uh, because of COVID. Which well, is entirely inaccurate. That's incorrect. You you could always enter the United States as a green card holder during COVID, or after COVID, you know, at all points in time. So the excuse that COVID happened and you couldn't come back to the United States is not a valid reason to apply. You no, know, yeah. they're not going to accept that. Which is, I just got a an email. Resident visa. I was having an email exchange actually today with an individual from Canada who's asking this exact question. Yeah, that's not a valid reason. I've been reason. there since 2020 because of yeah. COVID. Well, I'm sorry. Well, that's not a re- yeah. That's not a reason to have not returned to what the U.S. Immigration Service considers your home. Yeah, and if it were your home, like it's supposed to be, well, you would have been stuck in the U.S., not in Canada. Right. So that's another flaw with that too. Oh, I was stuck in Canada. Well, if U.S. is your permanent residence, you would have been stuck in the U.S., not Canada. Well, so you have to be careful with that. And there it, were some countries that people couldn't easily get leave. back from, yeah. you know, because Canada's of flights of and things like that. But yeah, Canada is not you one of them. had a tougher time getting <laughs> back to Canada than getting to the U.S. Yeah, true. With all the restrictions yeah, that and process. arrive can and testing and <laughs> quarantine requirements going to Canada, that's much more difficult than it was to come in the U.S. as a U.S. permanent resident. So, uh, so that's it, not going to fly. So if you're yeah, outside if you the spent, United States and you're a green card holder and you've been out there since 2020. You could be in trouble. Uh, yeah, you can try for a returning resident visa, but I think it's going to be a, a tough argument to make. So three of the most common mistakes that we see green card holders make and um, while they're a green card holder. Three of the most common ones that can really impact your um, permanent residency here in the United States. We just covered one of them. I guess you could say four. One of them is spending, making the U.S. your temporary residence, not your permanent residence. Right. That's a huge mistake. Um, so another one. and Not filing your taxes. Not filing U.S. taxes is, is, is as a permanent resident, you're required to file federal and state and local taxes. So that's a requirement as a green card holder. Um, another one, claiming to be a U.S. citizen mm, yeah. or voting in the United States. You're not allowed to do that until you are, in fact, a U.S. citizen. And they'll ask you about that, too, on your naturalization application, whether or not you've ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen. And if you have, that can impact your ability to, to become a citizen down the road. So you got to be careful with that. You're not a U.S. citizen. It's a different you know, and many Canadians call it, like, I want to get my citizenship in the United States. Well, citizenship is very different from permanent residence. So you to keep that in mind. Yeah. And the last major mistake people make, it, that's not maintaining what's called a good moral character. Uh, and the biggest way to, to violate that is to break the law. Criminal charges in the U.S. If, you, if you're convicted of certain crimes... Not only you could lose your permanent residency, and it also prevents you from even becoming a U.S. citizen if that was your goal down the road. Um, so, make sure you obey the law. Just, you know, traffic violations, parking tickets. Yeah, you those know, don't you really avoid those, but they're not. That's not what we're talking about the level here. That yeah, crimes of good moral character are uh, things that you. I mean, it, fraud, it's deceit, per- murder. Yeah. I mean. It, there's major crimes, but there's also lesser crimes, you know, domestic violence and things like that, mm-hmm, where that they do. can have a major consequence. Sure. So you have to be careful. Maintain that good moral character. Don't break the law. So those three common mistakes, claiming to be a U.S. citizen or or voting, uh, not maintaining your good moral character, and not filing your taxes in the U.S. Um, three tips that, that we would give if um, you're a U.S. permanent resident. And live, we hit that we hit this, live in the United States, <laughs> live in the United States. And we hit we I think we beat that drum pretty yeah. consistently throughout this podcast, right. because that's probably the most common one we see dealing with Canadians, not spending more than 50 percent of your time in the United States. Yeah, you got to keep that mindset that you're now a resident of the U.S. and everywhere else you go, you're just visiting. And I think if you keep that in mind, it'll help you to, um, you know, make the right choices when it comes to determining where you're going to put down your roots. And if you live that cross-border life, well, there's one of the other tips we'll give you is apply for U.S. citizenship as soon as you possibly can. Because once you become a U.S. citizen, 
Well, then you can take trips outside of the United States for as long as you want. It doesn't, it won't impact you. You could actually live in Canada at that point or whatever country you desire once you're a U.S. citizen, and you're not going to lose your citizenship once you have it that way. So apply for U.S. citizenship as soon as you can. Uh, if it's through marriage to a U.S. citizen, you're going to qualify after three years. If you meet the requirements, if you obtained it otherwise, you'll it's qualify five after years. five years. And the last tip that we'll give, and we've hit on this one as well, is if you're going to no trips outside the United States for six months or more unless you have a reentry permit before you leave. Right. Make sure you plan ahead for that. So those tips, again, don't if. And we've seen lots of people who didn't do that. Um, a lot. You know, they, they're like, well, I don't know what to do now. I've got this green card. I don't want to give it up. I worked hard to get it, but I've been out for two years what should I do? Um, you know, in a lot of cases, people can apply for a returning resident visa. And in some cases, they just can't. Maybe they'll enter the U.S. And what happens is the border officers, um, if they recognize the situation, they can put you into removal proceedings, meaning that you'll have to make an appearance in immigration court in the United States to make an argument as to why you should be able to keep your green card. Yeah, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. Yeah. Um, so those tips again. Um spend the majority of your time inside the United States. If you're going to be outside the United States over six months, get a reentry permit and apply for U.S. citizenship as soon as you possibly can. So the, this covers your general rights and responsibilities as a U.S. permanent resident or green card holder uh, in the United States. This is a serious responsibility. If you're going to live here and make this your permanent resident, you need to understand those what your obligations are there, as well as what rights you have as a U.S. permanent resident. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope you turn into to future podcasts. And again, make sure you check us out and the other mediums that we have on social media. If you have any questions uh, about U.S. immigration law or specifically need assistance with the U.S. immigration matter, uh, we're here to help you. Thank you for listening and have a great day.